you probably heard about me already is how I fixed my first NCAA playoff game at the age of 12. In case you didn't, let me tell you that tipping the odds isn't nearly as difficult as one might think. It was five years ago, spring of 94, March Madness round one. Las Vegas was favored by 16 points over North Dakota State. I found out who was ref in the game and FedExed him a dead cat with a card that said best wishes, signed Jerry Tarkanian. It was a complete massacre. The Rebs starting five had all fouled out by the end of the first half. That's my signature story and personal claim to fame, but it doesn't make me anything special. Every kid who grows up hanging around the strip has a couple just as good. And besides, I was too young and stupid to take advantage of the situation. If I'd had the slightest clue what information like that would have been worth to the proper parties, I wouldn't be pounding a keyboard on the off chance of trading a few ink spots for enough cash to keep my kneecaps intact. And I sure wouldn't have spent last Wednesday night throwing away two weeks lunch money on the craps tables at Bally's. It was a pretty fair crowd for midweek. 11, maybe 11.30. Just about the time and I when the East Coast goofs come straggling back to the hotels all tired out from watching the Sparkle Boys prance around with the big white cats. Two steps into the lobby, they hear those bells ringing and see the wheels spinning. Get a good deep whiff of that piped-in oxygen. Next thing you know, fingers are digging into pockets. Chips go skittering onto tables. Coins start plunking into slots and everybody's acting like it's New Year's Eve. It's only about an hour or so of Mardi Gras before the hardcores settle in like zombies at the 21 tables and the lightweights shuffle off to bed. But in that hour, there's some serious cash to be made. I was scouting the room for opportunities while my boy Dane showcased his talents from the don't pass line at one of the marquee craps tables. Sort of a risky situation given we're both a few years shy of legal age for patronizing a gambling establishment in the state of Nevada. He's a month away from 17 and I just turned, but he's 6'3 and GQ handsome and built. We both know how to play the room. Nobody ever gives us a hassle. We always break out the Armani jackets and the electroplated bulbas when we come down to the strip. And besides, we've been hanging around here so long the pit bosses probably figure we must be at least 26 by now. She was standing off the far corner of Dane's table trying her best to blend into the scenery. And I see 200 like her every week. Middle 40s, divorced, financially secure, and a long, long way from home. In town from a trade show or maybe just a spring fling with the girls. Bored with gambling but not quite ready to call it a night. Lonely and desperate, she didn't even know it. She was shuffling a stack of hundred dollar chips from one hand to the other while scanning the crowd for friendly faces. And in the meantime, we're shooting more than an occasional glance I couldn't help noticing at the good looking dark haired kid in the sport coat at the craps table. I made a long, slow circuit around the casino floor and then eased up alongside. My friend likes you, I said in my sincerest, most casual tone. What? My friend, the guy in the Armani jacket, he really likes you. She stared back at me like I'd just beamed in from the moon, wondering who this hell this jerk kid was, repeating her own secret fantasy back to her out loud. Her face froze solid for a second as she stood there trying to figure out why she didn't just tell me to get bent and go back to doing whatever it was she was doing before the blood started rushing into her head. If she didn't know yet and I did, was it already she was a done deal. Why doesn't he tell me that himself? The chip slipped from her fingers of her right hand into the palm of her left. Well, he's kind of distracted right now. We're students at UNLV and tuition for next term is due tomorrow. He doesn't have the money, so he's out tonight trying to win it. But believe me, he'd really rather be with you. And how much does he need for tuition? She was shuffling faster now, punctuating each flurry of chips with an impatient pause. 500. If I could just get it somewhere, I could tell him I wanted it roulette. She stared me dead in the eye with a look that had financed a hundred tract homes in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And that's all there was to it. Nothing left for me to do but signal Dane and point him to his date for the evening. He stepped over, took her hand, and looked deep in her eyes, and I swear I thought she was going to keel over right there on the casino floor. 
thing she knew his arm was around her, she was plastered to his side like a jello mold, and he was steering her toward the elevators. He pushed the button, turned, and gave her a little kiss while they waited for the car. Dane just instinctively seems, seems to know all that saccharine shit women go crazy for. And wheeled her right up into the elevator, up 11 dizzy floors, and into her room, leaving me behind to cash in the chips and find some way of entertaining myself for a couple hours. While he reminded her of how badly she needed a good heart infusion of lean muscle mass and useful enthusiasm. Split, by the way, is perfectly fair. I get 300, Dane gets two, and he gets laid. He likes older women better anyway. He says they're more appreciative, as if that makes up the difference between 45 and 16. But if that's what he likes, it should be well worth the extra money to him. Besides, I do all the hard work. He'd be the first one to admit he isn't cut out for my job. Crying five bills away from a middle-aged businesswoman in 20 seconds flat, and doing it so smooth and clean she's still sporting a permagrin two days later when her plane touches down back in Philly. It's a skill that should not be taken lightly, and all the more so when you're a semester and a half into your junior year of high school. Self-confidence is the key. That's one thing I learned from the old man. With an ounce of self-confidence, you can make 999 people out of 1,000 do just about whatever you want, no matter if you're 5 years old, 17, or 103. Because 999 people out of 1,000 stumble all the way through life without scraping together as much as a gnat's ass.